Hey guys, what's up? So, I want to get this video started. I'm going to start doing a series of videos based on chapters of a book that I've just recently started reading. Now, I don't normally do this, but I feel like merch. I, I think that it would really help people if you break something down, go piece by piece, kind of like he did in this book considering how big the Rational Mail book, if you haven't read that, check it out. It's a very good book based on a praxology of uh, human mechanics and interacting. Um, but this book is called Praxeology, Volume 1, Frame. And it's by Orion Stone. Now, if you know anything about this book, why is it doing that in this video? I don't know. I'll figure it out later. If you know anything about this book, he actually uh, was going to name it something else and then change his mind. So here we are, Praxeology Volume 1 on Self-Actualization for the Modern Man. Okay. Now, I'm not sure why he didn't put his name on the front of it, but he's got it on the side. So I don't guess it much matters. But um, I wanted to take a look at this and show you guys a little bit about it. I really like the book so far. Um, I'm trying to get into everything. Uh, I won't get too far into like the dedication and the forward. I know that uh, they spent a lot of time on it. I know Rolo Tomasi spent a lot of time on this, but uh, I ain't got time for it. Uh, you know, too long didn't read uh, Generation. There's an introduction to it. Not going to read that either. Um, we're going to get into the beginning of it. Now, it's not a very long book. It's got, uh, in total, the last page here, it's never been about telling you what to think. It's about showing you how to think. Uh, rhinestone. And it's 193 pages right there. It just says Finn. So it's not a, not a super long book. And um, that's one thing that I really like about it because... It breaks down one subject. If you want to know one particular thing, here you go. Now, uh, it says for further reading, which I also like in the back of it, if you're the kind of person who loves to do a deep dive, I include a list of supplementary readings in an order of importance. And there's Dr. Glover books, no more Mr. Knife Guy, uh, there's Rolla Tomasi, Rational Mail, uh, there's Dow Rock, uh, there's Roos, uh, Roycey, uh, the Married Red Pill, Jeffrey Miller, Hector Garcia, um, Garcia, I mean, Joe Navarro, Matt Ridley, another Robert Green, Tanner Guzzi. Surprise, Tanner Guzzi's on there. I like him. He's just, he's more of a Tradcon guy. He doesn't really, and Ryan doesn't really like Tradcon, so it's funny that he's on there. He's more of a, I look at Tanner more as a style guy. Like if I'm looking to look into style and how to make myself look better, I would go to Tanner. Everything else, uh, I don't really need 15 wives, so I don't really want to live in Salt Lake City. And uh, if you know anything about Mormons, they're kind of going downhill anyway. Because they let women into the space. Anyway. So, if you get in the beginning here, excuse me, is the, the tetrahedron of frame. Tetrahedron of frame. And you'll see that I have things underlined, things highlighted in this book already. I've got notes, things written down, stuff like that. That means you're reading it. That means you're interacting with it. Mm, nice. So the tetrahedron of frame. And it starts out here for every section in this book. I always start with a question. What do I want and what's in this for me? Here's the deal. Here's something very interesting about that concept that they were just talking about earlier in a video. There's a lot of men out there who have never took a singular thought to themselves. And that might sound weird, but they literally grew up always thinking about somebody else to the point to where they're in a marriage now and it's all about the other people. There's nothing about them that's individual. 
And off the top of my head, I can I can name at least three or four guys that I know. They're in marriages. They're that guy. There's nothing about them that is them. They might say, well, I go fishing all the time. I go hunting all the time. Yeah, but literally you work and provide for your family. And that's all you do is go fishing and hunting. But like there's no there's no you personality wise. You're just a dude that hunts and fishes. You know what I'm saying? Does that make any kind of sense? Like, what do you want out of life? Now, if you if that's all you want, cool, 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 okay. But I feel like, merch, I think that there's a lot of guys out there that literally don't have any concept of what's going on in their marriage because they're not thinking about themselves ever. And that woman's totally taking advantage of that situation. Eventually, she's going to get bored with it and she's going to kick him out. Or she's going to gain 50 pounds and then she can't go anywhere. And uh, now he's got an overweight wife. Does that make any kind of sense? Think about yourself. I can't help anyone if I don't help myself first. I can't help anyone as good as if I don't help myself first. Heard that before, haven't you? Um, now, I've underlined some things here about frame because the main book is frame. So let's talk about a few things with it. Uh, people get really confused about what frame is. They don't really know per se what, what frame is. And it's hard to explain frame to somebody who has no concept of it. So one of the simplest things that I've heard is frame is your universe. You, your universe. And anything outside of that is, amu is amusing or funny, but doesn't affect you. Does that make sense? And uh, another good way to, um, to talk about it here is, you know how you go to your parents' house and you act different around your parents, even when you're older? Because your parents have frame over you. And frame could be any, any situation. And if you get in a relationship and a man doesn't have frame in that relationship, the woman will insert her frame. Does that make sense? Where she's kind of controlling a relationship. He's in her frame. Okay. It says here, frame is not stoicism. Get that? Frame is not stoicism. It's not about being rock. It's about being an oak. It's not dominance. It's not being victorious. It's not godlikeness. Frame is not good. Neither is it bad. Um, it's kind of like masculinity. Masculinity just is. Frame just is. It's not good or bad. It's objective. Don't try to add your morals to it. It just is. A car is not good or bad. It just is. Um, here's another one I underlined. Frame is literally how you conceptualize, how you process, and how you react to the world around you. That's frame. Um, there's non-useful frame. Um, if you're in a sexless marriage and your frame is based on the idea that your wife gets first crack at your libido and not so custody when it's good. Um, that's what guys really have a hard time thinking about is your wife gets first crack at your libido. She doesn't have sole custody. <gasps> what does that mean? Is he saying to cheat? Is he saying to cheat? Oh my gosh. No, I'm not. But what I'm saying is, uh, if she thinks she's got it on lockdown and she never gives it up, think about your options. Because sitting there in that dead relationship is not helping anybody. And she's going to lose respect for you because of it. Um, work, self-respect, options, authority, expectations, investment. That's all the things that you can get by owning your, by owning your stuff. 
Frame is, uh, is a base formed by your physical, intellectual, emotional selves, which provides a stable foundation for you to structure your vision, your goals. Okay. Um, and it goes into physical, intellectual, and emotional. Breaks those down. And this is just in the tetrahedron of frame. It says men once had organizations they could join or were forced to attend to build these pillars. You'd go to church to hear your pre priests offer guidance. You'd go to a shrink to address your mental health. You'd ask your dad or your brothers or your best friend to help you through a rough patch in a relationship. You would have a beer with co-workers to get your work gripes out of your system. Shriners, Freemasons, the Legion, Boy Scouts. All those traditional male organizations turned co-ed or disappeared entirely. Now, in my small town, if I think about uh, Freemasons and the Shriners, that's the main ones that is in my town. Drunks. That's all they are is drunks. Especially the Shriners. They drive around their little mini cars at the parade and they're just drunk all the time. Freemasons, same thing, drunk. Uh, Boy Scouts, I couldn't name you a Boy Scout place here. Couldn't name one. You're either on a football team or you're on a baseball team or you're on a basketball team. That's the only options you have here. Um, the church shifted from a place of emotional solace for a play, uh, for all to a place where uh, on Mother's Day, men are told to venerate women and on Father's Day, chastised for having insufficiently venerated them. Now, I want you to think about that. The next time you go to church, and it's Valentine's Day. What, sh what are they going to talk about on Valentine's Day? Treating you woman right. Uh, selfishly uh, falling on your sword for your woman. Isn't she the best? Isn't she my better half? Same thing all over again. Since feminism has taken over the soul of our societies, it had three generations to prove it could guide men into a positive masculine identity that serves men's best interests, but they have failed miserably at this job. So to that we say thanks, but no thanks. Yeah, feminism's so great. Why are we in why aren't we in the crap hole right now? Hmm? If it's so great, it's not. It's about supremacy. It's not about e equality. Frame means you are no longer you no longer react to people in the world and their childish problems. That's something that a lot of people really struggle with, not reacting to other people's situations. Like you say you're at work and this guy has a bad attitude every day and he just like this mouths off and you can, there's nothing you can do about it. He almost sounds like a drunk. He's just always looking for an argument and he's loud and just talking over everybody and just, and just gets everybody ill. Try not reacting to that guy. Try not getting in your head on that guy. The easiest way to, that I've found to do that situation is when they start doing that, Hold your mouth closed. Just hold your mouth closed. And then just walk off. They don't know how to take that. They don't know what's going on. When did he do that? Anything outside your frame is amusing, intriguing, or funny. Think about that. Think about that. When you're dealing with women in particular, and she's throwing a fit, and she's crying and screaming and just hollering, and you're just sitting there like, uh, okay, oh, all right, that's what I'm talking about. That's what he's talking about here in this book. You uh, take women seriously, but not literally. And what I mean by seriously is not not very. Kind of in the same way you would take um, an eight-year-old that's throwing a tantrum. An eight-year-old little girl throwing a tantrum. You don't take her seriously, do you? You're kind of like, uh, can you stop that? That's the same way you take a woman. When she's throwing a fit like that, you're like, somebody didn't take their meds. You know, it's just you make a joke. You don't care. It's funny. It's ha-ha. And then you move going about your life. Um, I've had that happen a lot of times to me. 
and uh, you're just kind of like, okay, let's move on with your life. You don't, nothing affects you because it's not in your frame, okay? Uh, and it's not about being a rock, it's about being an oak. You know, an oak sways in the wind, uh, oak loses its leaves and grows its leaves back and gets bigger and grows, like it's interacting around it, but it's not being so much affected by it. You know what I mean? You're swaying in women, you're not breaking. Okay, so that's something to think about. And that's pretty much all of that part. And the next part is a physical pillar. Now it goes through here and uh, does a physical, and then it breaks down the, the other pillars. And uh, what I think I'll do is I'll do a separate video on those pillars. And just break all those down for you because there's so much to it. I don't want to um, like just jump over things because there's a lot to these. Because you have in the physical pillar, it's breaking down like hygiene, fitness, uh, things like that. Uh, it even has workout programs in here going all the way into. Yeah, so this right here is all the physical pillar right there. Like, it's that much. Like a fourth of the book. So it's going to have each pillar in here. It's going to have its own section. And that's why I want to do um, like a breakdown of each one. Does that make sense? And uh, so far, I really like the book. I think that he put a lot of time into this. I can I can see that he has and I really hope this is not the last one because what I was really hoping he would do is break down pretty much every section that was in the rational mail and do a supplementary book on it and the way that I was explaining to somebody the other day was you know how you get a science book and it's like biology and it's the whole book and it's like man you know like, well there's a lot of stuff in here but then you get like um uh, human biology and you're like okay and there's anatomy for humans and it's got a section broke down and then um, you get in there it's like cardiovascular system all right one section next one skeletal system you know next section whatever I, I like that I want I want him to do that and I hope that he does because um, I don't get a chance to buy a lot of books because I have so much stuff going on. So I have to do the audio book on a lot of them. And so I'm buying like hard copies of these guys' books. And I just hope that they understand like how big of a deal that is. Um, but he's always been a stand-up guy to me. Now, um, we don't agree on everything, but we agree on a lot of stuff. Like Ryan Stone is a really good interpreter of relationships. Like there's there's people who study human mechanics and interacting, and then there's guys that study just relationships, and Ryan Stone is like pow, 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 right in there. And I'm not trying to like blow smoke up his butt or anything. It's just that you hear him talk about these relationships and stuff, and he starts bringing up particular subjects because he knows what he's talking about, and you're going, Okay, I need to listen. This guy's telling some stuff. You know? So, like I said, I'm going to do each section. That was the first one. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. It's getting, it's really hard. I got the new setup. I got the new, the new thing that I'm trying to build right now. I got my computer and, and lights and stuff kind of set up now. But I'm trying to get more like, this is a studio for me. And uh, probably hang some Viking stuff in the background because I just love Viking so much. Um, I mean, you know, so that's me. Um, so if you guys have any ideas on things for decorations, let me know. I'm going to have some more lighting in here. Going to get everything going. 
So it's a building process. But I uh, really appreciate you guys watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and let me know how this video was for you, if it was an intellectual, if it helped you at all, and uh, let me know if it pushes you to get in the book. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.